Hello students. Uh, today's class we are learning about the uh, cracking in chemical fuels. Why do you need to go for cracking and what is the importance or significance of cracking? What is cracking? It is decomposition of heavier hydrocarbon molecules into simpler ones of low boiling fractions and low molecular weights. I will tell you what is the significance of cracking in the next slide. And here we have taken the example of decane which is 10 carbon hydrocarbon uh, uh, moiety and this is broken into simpler carbons that is pentane and uh, pentene an alkene and an alkene of low boiling points so this is 174 degree centigrade high boiling uh, point hydrocarbon heavy molecular weight into simpler hydrocarbons and here you can see how these long chain hydrocarbons containing uh, carbon and hydrogens are broken into smaller alkanes and uh, branched alkanes and branched alkenes. So these smaller alkanes and cycloalkanes would break up into again simpler alkenes or branched alkenes and aromatics. So you can obtain different fractions of hydrocarbons by this cracking method. And cracking can be classified into two types thermal cracking and catalytic cracking we are actually focusing on catalytic cracking so thermal cracking is breaking up of heavier hydrocarbons into smaller ones at very high temperatures as you see this is a thermal cracking and uh, the temperature here is about 700 to 750 and the pressure is 70 atmospheres thermal cracking gives mixture of products like uh, other uh, heavier hydrocarbon uh, molecules like more than five, 10 atoms uh, carbon atoms containing hydrocarbons and alkenes and aromatics but what is the importance of catalytic cracking okay it is actually carried at moderately low pressures and temperature of about 500 degrees centigrade and here the catalytic cracking in this method the catalyst that is used is aluminosilicates you have the silicate uh, cage-like structure where you have the aluminum uh, uh, charged ions, aluminum ions inside these cage structures. So zeolites have some significance in this cracking method. You have an idea that zeolites are also used as ion exchange resins. And this catalyst is particularly chosen because it is going to give you high percentage of hydrocarbon leading to 5 to 10 carbon atoms particularly used for gasoline or petrol we know that during the fractional distillation you get gasoline or petrol but it is only 20 percent of the entire yield the remaining fractions of the petrol that is heavy oil naphtha and uh, uh, i mean to say lubricating oil heavy oil these are heavier hydrocarbons which are subjected for cracking to obtain this small fractions of hydrocarbons and in these small fractions we know that petrol is in high demand so we have chosen catalytic cracking particularly the zeolite which has the capacity to break the hydrocarbons into 5 to 10 carbon atoms when this you know it is particularly obtained for gasoline and how it works let us see and here you can see that In this particular area this is your hydrocarbon and here you have the zeolite catalyst this zeolite catalyst would try to take up the electrons of carbon as well as hydrogen so these are all hydrogen atoms these are all hydrogen atoms and these are carbon atoms and this is a lengthy chain extension and this zeolite would capture the hydrogen atom along with the two electrons here so here you can see that zeolite catalyst is capturing that hydrogen atom along with the two electrons that are bond between carbon and uh, hydrogen right and here carbon is left with a positive charge I repeat again the zeolite catalyst would abstract this hydrogen atom along with the two electrons of the bond and then leaving behind a positive charge on this carbon atom so it leads to formation of carbonium ions so this carbonium ion will these carbonium ions which are generated would reorganize combine to lead to the formation of 
hydrocarbons probably the C5C9 that is petrol or gasoline in major proportions. That is why we have chosen this zeolite as a catalyst. Is it clear? Now coming to the significance of cracking. In this cracking method, the gasoline as I told you, in the fractional distillation procedure, the highest demand for motor fuel is gasoline, that is petrol. But only 20 to 30% of this is obtained during fractional distillation of crude oil. And the straight run petrol obtained in this method is not so pure. It can be used only after blending. Maybe it is to avoid knocking and uh, removal of other impurities. To overcome these difficulties, these high boiling fractions, what you call the fuel oil or the lubricating oil, heavy oil or the lubricating oil, are converted into low boiling fractions like gasoline or petrol by cracking. As you have seen, what are the different uh, methods of cracking you have in the slides? Thermal cracking and Uh, thermal cracking and catalytic cracking. Okay, the uh, this cracked gasoline which is obtained after cracking would be better uh, devoid of any impurities. That means you will get pure gasoline when compared to the fractional distillation procedure. So in cracking, the higher hydrocarbons are converted to simpler molecules. That is our main idea. So you had an idea about cracking, how exactly it works. We'll see in one of the method called moving bed method or fluid bed catalytic cracking where in this method we are using a catalyst which is very finely powdered and almost behaves like a fluid and which would circulate in the stream that is through this diagram I will try to explain you how exactly it works. So here the feed oil what you get is heavy oil is allowed to pass through this preheater which is maintained at around 500 or 550 degrees centigrade and then this heavy oil is allowed to pass through this pipe wherein the heavy oil is converted to vapor is mixed with catalyst and this catalyst is actually coming down from the catalytic regenerator uh, first, let me tell you this setup actually consists of a preheater. This is a preheater which is maintained at 500 to 550 because in this temperature only the heavy oil would break up into the vapors and then this is a catalyst regenerator and this is your uh, reactor and this is the fractional distillating column and this is the cooler and this is the stabilizer. Okay, so here let me tell you. Um, what happens from this preheater as the oil gets evaporated this vapor of oil would mix with the catalyst here coming down and here you have the mixture of catalyst and vapor of oil mixing together and from here through this pipe it is going to a reactor this this entire thing is called as a reactor and this reactor the temperature is maintained around 500 degrees centigrade so what happens in this reactor is the catalyst would react with the vapor of oil and you have here a cyclone centrifugal separator. What is the use or what is the importance of the cyclone centrifugal separator here? It is going to separate the catalyst along with uh, any unburned hydrocarbons or carbon particles and will separate only and, and, and will allow only the cracked vapors of hydrocarbon to pass through into the fractionating column leaving behind all catalyst powder here leaving behind the catalytic powder here along with our unburned hydrocarbons or carbon particles now the cracked vapor is allowed to pass through the fractionating column wherein you have already seen in our previous slide how to remove the different fractions based upon the difference in the boiling points heavier fractions will be obtained or collected at the bottom and the lighter fractions will be sent here into the cooler and here in the cooler you have the mixture of gasoline and gases obtained actually you have a steam passed into this cooler 
you have steam passed into this cooler so what happens here in this cooler the lighter fractions would condense and form solution of gasoline along with some uncondensed gases some of the gases would be collected here and remaining uncondensed gases would be allowed to pass through the stabilizer so from the cooler the solution that is a liquid form of uh, your gasoline as well as mixture of gas would be allowed to pass through the stabilizer in the stabilizer the uncondensed gases would be coming out from the top and pure gasoline is obtained at the bottom this is actually observed in your previous slides how fractional uh, column works now our main idea is how actually the catalyst is regenerated and uh, what is importance of this method this process is done now what is happening at the reactor this, this is a regenerator this is this is the regenerator and this is the reactor so what is happening at the reactor when all the cracked vapors are passed through the centrifugal separator which would actually filter the cracked vapors and the remaining uh, uh, catalyst as well as unburnt hydrocarbons would settle down here so what happens here the unburnt hydrocarbons along with the catalyst because the catalyst uh, is adsorbing those carbon particles and become spent this is called a spent catalyst so what is spent it is nothing but the carbon particles which are adsorbed on the surface of the catalyst now this spent catalyst is allowed to pass through another standing pipe here from where you have an air blow here you have an air blow from here and this air blower would forcibly move these allow the spent particles coming from here and forcibly move these spent catalyst into the catalytic regenerator so this catalytic regenerator what is the role this catalyst regenerator which is maintained at 600 degree centigrade this catalyst regenerator which is maintained at 600 degree centigrade would crack or would uh, separate the catalyst from the carbon particles so what are the carbon particles the unburnt carbon particles which i told you this cyclo centrifugal separator will actually separate these carbon particles in the form of flue gases and the fresh catalyst again that is zeolite what we have seen uh, aluminum silica aluminosilicates that's sio2 and al2o3 so that is a catalyst which is regenerated and it is allowed to pass through this pipe which can react with the incoming batch of fresh vapor oil and the process is repeated till the cracked vapors are further converted to gasoline and gas mixture which is allowed to pass through the stabilizer and the gas and gasoline are collected separately so in the entire uh, a uh, procedure of moving bed method uh, let me repeat this preheater where you uh, maintain the temperature of around 500 degrees centigrade is allowed to pass the feed oil that is heavy oil obtained from uh, fractional distillation of petroleum uh, uh, that is converted to vapor state and this vapor is mixed with a catalyst and this catalyst is coming from the catalytic regenerator and this catalyst is so fluid in nature this is going to mix up with the vapor oil and enters into the next chamber that is reactor in the reactor what happens the uh, reactor would allow the reaction between the catalyst as well as the vapor oil where you have the separation of the cracked vapors through this cyclone centrifugal separator Uh, which actually actually acts as a filter separates down or puts down all the catalyst and then unburnt hydrocarbons and only cracked vapors are allowed to pass through the fractionating column and from here any heavy oil is coming out from the bottom and the lighter fractions would go to the cooler and in the cooler you have the um, condensation of these vapors and which are then allowed to pass through the stabilizer this cooler consisting of gasoline and gas solution is allowed to pass through the stabilizer wherein the gases are collected from the top and the gasoline is collected from the bottom and what is the role of this regenerator this catalyst regenerator here 
he is going to regenerate the catalyst by separating the carbon particles of the catalyst from uh, the unburned hydrocarbons and the pure catalyst is regenerated here. So how is it done? In the reactor here, as I told you, the unburned hydrocarbons which are coming out along with the catalyst is called as spent and this spent catalyst is allowed to pass through this pipe, stand pipe, wherein a blow of air here will be forcibly given which makes this spent move like a fluid into this catalytic reactor that is a regenerator wherein in the regenerator which is maintained at 600 degrees centigrade the catalyst is separated and unburned hydrocarbons are only allowed to pass through as flow gases through the cyclone centrifugal separator which acts as a filter and the pure catalyst is allowed to pass through this turning pipe and allowed to mix through the fresh batch of oil and this cycle continues as long as you are using this as you are as long as you are feeding the oil in this and catalyst is also regenerated so it's one of the best method of obtaining the pure gasoline that's petrol so here we have some points which i already explained there the vapors of cracking oil mixed with the fluidized catalyst is forced up into the reactor in which cracking of heavier and lighter molecules takes place as you have seen here in the reactor the mix near the top of the reactor there is a centrifugal separator called cyclone which allows only the crack vapors to pass to fractionating column and the catalyst powder retains here as you have seen in the uh, in this um, In this diagram, you have seen the reactor where catalytic uh, catalyst is sent back at the bottom and crack vapors to the fractionating column. And uh, the catalyst powder gradually becomes heavier due to coating with carbon and settles at the bottom. Here you have seen, uh, which is settling at the bottom as spent. And in the regenerator, the carbon is burnt and the regenerated catalyst flows through a standpipe for mixing with the incoming oil. So this is what we have already See. this part so this catalyst powder is coming here blown through the fresh air and from here it is entering into this area of catalyst regenerator and at this temperature of 600 degrees centigrade this flue gases will be separated and pure catalyst is mixed with the incoming fresh batch of oil So at the top of the regenerator, there is a separator. As you have seen here, this is the separator. This is the separator. And here you also have a separator here. Which permits only the flow gases and hold back the catalyst particles. And the cracked oil vapors from the reactor pass through the fractionating column. And the heavy oil is separated from the bottom. The vapors are then allowed to pass through the cooler. And it is sent to the stabilizer where you have the removal of gases from the top and recovery of pure gasoline from the bottom. And this is one plant which shows the main column here. So that's a fractionating column. And here you have the reactor where actually the catalyst and the fracture uh, and your heavy oil that is your crude oil uh, the fraction of uh, crude petroleum would react in this in the presence of catalyst and this is the catalyst regenerator where wherein it is going to regenerate the catalyst thank you